Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tuesday Evening Pearls of Grace Ministries UK online Bible study. Tonight, I'm going to talk about, and I'll be asking, I, I, I want you all to answer the questions and things at the, at the end of the lesson uh, when we're in our discussion time. But have the gifts of the Holy Spirit ceased today? These wonderful gifts, the, the different denominations all around the place, keep sort of one denomination say they're in uh, operation day, another denom denomination says no, they're not. They sh they died away with the first apostles. Another denomination says they never existed. I'm going to prove it to you tonight that they existed and that they still exist today. Before we go any further, um, can we all agree here in the Zoom call and those that be listening and play back afterwards uh, that Jesus is the perfect. He's the only perfect person there is, right? And anytime, any time in any sermon or in the Bible, when the, uh, this, it says when the perfect comes, they're talking about Jesus, okay? So Jesus is perfect. He is the perfect. Can I get a head shake or a no or what, uh, whatever? All right, brilliant. Hallelujah. Everybody's shaking their head, yes. I like it when you all agree with me. Okay. Let's have a look. If, if you've got your Bibles with you and you want to read your own Bibles, I'm going to be reading from... Um, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and there's only what like uh, 12 13 verses in it so I'm reading from the New King James Version and it's it is written lo I speak with tongues of men and of angels but have not love I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal and lo, I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And lo, I have all faith so that I could, so that I could remove mountains, but, but have not love, I am nothing. And lo, I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. And lo, I give my body to be burned, but have not love. It profits me nothing. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. It is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. <laughs> Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Maybe a second, there's a, a noise going on here. Right, there, got it. Uh, For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, right? And that's important. But And that's in verse 10. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. Verse 10 is very important. you got you got to hang on to that one. And I'm going to read it again. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. 
and now abide faith, hope, love, these three things, but the greatest of these is love. Now, verse 10. I'll know in part perfect comes. The whole of Corinthians chapter 13, it tells us it should really make up. OK, you could re, you should really make up your own interpretation of it. I, I, I know that. But it also tells us that gifts are still in use today and they should be used today. Right. And we don't get to choose what gifts of the Holy Spirit we want. We can certainly ask for them. And if it's God's will, you'll be given them. But we can't run run around asking for everything we want. The Holy Spirit chooses who gets what gifts. OK, I am a firm believer, though, that if anybody wants their prayer language, there's four there's four tongues, uh, your personal prayer language. There's prophecy, interpretation of prophecy and different tongues. I am a firm believer that if you want your prayer language, you can ask for that people I have prayed over people or their prayer language and after about 15 20 minutes they've been uh, granted their prayer language and that's it so I do believe you can uh, ask for that and we'll talk about more in that in the discussion afterwards but in verse 8 it says love never ends as for prophecies they will pass away as for tongues they will cease as for knowledge it will pass away OK, it will pass away when the perfect comes. Now, as I said before, many churches, many denominations believe that these gifts have passed away with, with the uh, first apostle, the, the apostles in the first century. But they haven't. They really haven't, folks. You know, there's no expiration date on them. Nowhere in the Bible does it, is it stamped best before or used by okay so there's no expiration date on them the only expiration date on everything will be when jesus the rapture now not when jesus comes to uh, uh earth and the new jerusalem that's his second coming but at the, at the rapture when he's in the air and we're caught up in the air everyone's taken away and the holy spirit will be the last one to leave then there will be no need for us to use the gifts of wisdom and knowledge or laying on of hands of healing our people and all the rest of it, because we'll be in heaven. We don't, we'll not need them then. Okay, That's when they'll pass away. So there's no ex expiration date on them. And you know, In verse 9, it says, you know, we know in part, we prophesy in part. Verse 10 says, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. So we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, it will pass away. Now, we can be safe in saying here that when the perfect comes, this is when these gifts will expire. That's it. That they'll definitely they'll not be they'll not be needed then as explained the Holy Spirit at, at the rapture when we're all caught up and the Holy Spirit wants the last one to leave we will not need those spiritual gifts again and people here left on the earth will not be looking for the spiritual gifts because it'll be uh, Satan controlled totally Satan controlled now, but these gifts as I say uh, they will expire then and the question here is. What is this perfect thing referred to here in the 1 Corinthians 13, 10? Um, <coughs> excuse me. As I started off by asking you all at the very start, can we agree that Jesus is the perfect? So that's who, who, who Paul is talking about here in uh, verse 10 is the perfect is Jesus. So when Jesus comes back for us, we're caught up. He's the perfect. When the perfect comes, that's when they will cease. Verse 11 and 12 says, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. So we see dimly now, but when we're face to face with Jesus, we're going to see everything. Everything's going to be revealed to us. All those questions that we've ever had. Why wasn't everybody healed? 
uh, why did God let so many disasters happen? God's not let the disasters happen. Satan has control of this world. And it's Satan that is letting the disasters happen, making the disasters happen. Don't blame God and everything. In the same way, don't blame Satan and everything, because a lot of things that you end up doing wrong is your fault, not Satan's. The connection where it's still talking about a time we know in part, right? So we know in part, and the now in verse 12 is the same thing if you look back at verse 9. We know in part, we prophesy in part, okay? And to me, this is talking currently. This is talking now. Not past tense, not future tense, but currently, in the present, okay? And you know, this is really before the things will expire or pass, pass away. Paul says in verse 12, now if you, if you look at verse 12 again, I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. Jesus knows us fully. Jesus knows every hair in our head. Jesus knows exactly what we're going to do before we even think about it. Okay? And we can all agree on that too, can't we? Jesus knows everything. So, it says again, I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So when we're in heaven with Jesus, we will know everything. That's the only time you can ever say, that is the only time that anybody can ever say they know the Bible inside out. If any preacher pastor, minister, theologian, anybody says to me today, I know the Bible inside out, I know everything about it, I'll run from them for a mile. Because they don't. And they're false teaching. Because we'll not know everything until we're standing face to face with Jesus in heaven. Only then will we be able to boast to say that we know everything. Now, here, the time is being referred to when he says, I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. The then in verse 12 is the same time indicated by in verse 10, where it's written, when the perfect shall come. Okay? And when we try to figure out what time this will be, and yeah, I know, I've tried to figure it out. Those people have. I really believe, I really do believe that this is referring to Christ's return, as I say. Not a second coming, not when the new Jerusalem comes down and his feet touch the earth. At the rapture, his feet do not touch the earth. We are caught up in the sky to meet him. And it clearly states that in Revelation. Okay. But here Paul says something really interesting. Um, there in the whole introduction of the letter. Now, this, 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 the whole whole book of uh, one Corinthians, excuse me, is a letter to the uh, people of Corinthiae. And it's right at the very beginning, and Paul writes that in the, in the introduction of the letter, that I believe he's anticipating what he's going to say in chapter thirteen. So in uh. Chapter one, start. I'll, I'll jump to verse four, uh, where Paul says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech, like in all speech and all knowledge, even as that testimony about Christ was confirmed among you. So that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift. That's the forerunner to what he's writing about in chapter 13. That's way back in, as I say, chapter 1 and verse 4 it starts. Here, Paul brings up the matter of spiritual gifts right at the very start of this letter. Right at the very start in chapter 1. 
in the whole introduction to the letter, he brings up spiritual gifts. Now, he's anticipating, I believe, what he will say, as I say, in chapters 12, 13, and 14. If you haven't read the whole book of uh, 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 definitely 1 Corinthians, but Corinthians 1 and 2, if you haven't read them for a while, go back and read them because they're, they're, they really are uh, powerful books. But in sort of 12, 13, 14, as I say, that's, that's a precursor to them. But right after he says, there are they are not lacking in any spiritual gifts. Okay, right after that he says, so you are not lacking in any spiritual gifts as you wait for. Wait for it, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, now again, I believe, I personally believe here that Paul is saying that when the perfect comes, these gifts will expire. Okay? Again, it's, it says, you know, they lack no spiritual gift now as they wait for the perfect to come. We shouldn't be lacking in spiritual gifts. We're waiting for the perfect to come, aren't we? Again in chapter 1, if we can jump to chapter 1 again, he says there, it's the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Now, when the perfect comes, folks, we will no longer have use. We will no longer need the use. We will no longer need our spiritual gifts. I've said it, I think, twice before. That's the only time we will not need the spiritual gifts is when the perfect comes. But do I believe that the spiritual gifts are relevant for today? <laughs> yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I honestly do. And here the scriptures tells us that we will not be lacking in them till the perfect comes. Loads of people say they specialise in spiritual gifts. I wouldn't be that pompous to say I specialise in anything because it's not me. It's the Holy Spirit in me working through me. So the Holy Spirit specialises in the gifts. And the Holy Spirit has used me or operated through me in five, maybe six of the nine spiritual gifts. One, I've got my prayer language. A uh, couple of times the Holy Spirit has led me to lay hands on people for healing and people have been healed. He has given me uh, the gift when I've needed it, the gift of knowledge and the wisdom to use the knowledge. Um, the only gifts that he hasn't operated through me as yet is interpretation of tongues and different tongues. Um, all the other ones, every now and again, as and when the need arises, he, use, he, he, he works through me. And if we're a willing vessel, he will work through us in, in different things like that. Some people... He will only ever operate in one of the gifts through. Why he does that, I don't know. Again, when we are in heaven, we can ask that question and then we will know everything. I'm going to end the video now. I'm going to open this up to a discussion because I think here in the Zoom call, many people will have different ideas about the spiritual gifts. Um... And that's the private part of the Bible study. That's not for recording. But I do hope that anybody watching this in playback gets something from this. If you have any questions, any comments about it, you can by all means uh, message us. The web address is in the descriptions uh, of the video. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Saviour of your life and would like to know more about him, Get in touch with us and we will gladly speak with you 
and help, hopefully help guide you to make the right decision. If you would like us to pray for you, contact us and we will pray for you, with you and over you. We're here to help. There's no judgment, no condemnation in Christ. And there's no judgment or condemnation with any of us here at Pearls of Grace Ministries. Reach out to us. And remember, the only stupid question ever is the one you'll never ask. So ask away all your questions and we will gladly give you whatever answers we're led to. Until our next video, which will be Sunday, I hope everyone has a wonderful, blessed week. Bye. Thank you.